Good morning, everyone. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Um, wanted to talk a little bit about some modifications that I've done on the DRZ. I know there's probably 10,001 videos on YouTube already about modifications on the DRZ, and these are all probably the same modifications, but these are ones I did. By the way, my DRZ is green, it's now known as a KLX 400. So, yeah. Um, you see it here over my shoulder, it has post-it notes all over it. You're like, what in the wide world of sports happened here? Well, I did a review of my modifications on my Himalayan, oh, last year sometime. Did the same thing, plastered it with post-it notes and talked a little bit about each modification. Seemed like a decent way to do it. Um, anyway, let's, uh, let's take a look at the, um, the modifications on this guy. Well, there it is, the, um, the Kalex 400 clone. I think I mentioned it, uh, or I will mention it later in this video, uh, you know, through the magic of video. This is before the ride, right? Yeah, the next day. Anyway, so Kawasaki back in, um, I think the early 2000s, sold <clears throat> rebranded or rebadged DRZ 400s as KLX 400s. I kind of wish they did the same thing. I really do. You know, it's, it's, it would be a nice option, it, especially if it was a 450. I wish the DRZ would, you know, jump up to a 450, but uh, they can't make any changes to it or it's going to, you know, change the certifications that were made to get it into the U.S. to begin with. So that's why it still has a carburetor. That's why it's unchanged. Same with the XR650, uh, you know, and bikes like that. Uh, if they change those old bikes, then they have to be recertified. Uh, emissions wise <clears throat> and lighting everything right DOT certifications to get into the US and sell that bike so that's why they haven't changed if anyone's ever wondering why they haven't changed so yeah that's uh, that's why we're still able to buy old you can still buy this DRZ which I think is a 22 year old design unchanged in that same amount of years at your local Suzuki dealer so yeah uh, on the ride today, I talked a little bit about why would someone buy a, a KLX 300 over this and why would someone buy, you know, a CFR 250 or 300 over this. Um, it it kind of comes down to the carburetor. People are afraid of carburetors because the internet, I blame the internet. And of course, some of you may have had some bad experience with carburetors, but uh, I'm a carburetor kind of guy. I mean, I've been riding since 1974 dirt bikes, we didn't have fuel injection. So for, you know, thousands and thousands of miles, I had a ball with a carburetor. So it's, I don't know, it's not that bad. That's a constant velocity carburetor. It's a more modern design. Doesn't fail or lose as much power at altitude as people, you know, claim that it does. Um, anyway, I don't know what's going on with that on the internet, but uh, I think people just regurgitate everything they've been told, so. Anyway, I'm a carb guy and I don't let carburetors get in the way of me having fun or making purchases. There's nothing, uh, nothing that massively negative about a carburetor that, uh, that's detrimental to the operation of the motorcycle, in my opinion. But anyway, enough of that. Let's talk about some modifications and why we have these, uh, Green post-its, fitting, right? Wife found, I said, hey, you got any post-its? She said, well, I only have green ones. I'm like, well, that's perfect. Well, here we go. Anyway, so let's start at the post-it on the forks. The forks are basically stock. I did take them apart, clean them, put them back together, new seals. And I believe we put, I want to say 15 weight oil in there. I think it's 15 weight. Um, and I replaced the, uh, the gators because the original were original OEM from 20, this is a 2014, I think. Uh, so they were a little dry and crunchy and falling apart. Got those from Rocky Mountain. Uh, almost all of my modifications are from Rocky Mountain. Um, some from Amazon and others from various dealers online. Um, so yeah, that's basically all we've done with the forks. Disassemble, clean, new seals. Uh, 10 or 15 weight oil, I don't remember which, and then new fork gators. Moving on, I've got a, a, a post-it on the tire. These are, I had ordered, I made a big order to Rocky Mountain, and I got the Tusk D-Sport 
tires for the front and the rear. I don't have the rear mounted because that the bike came with a new rear tire mounted. And most of my riding during this modification session and testing uh, has been on the cement or asphalt commuting to work. And I thought you know, it was kind of foolish to wear out a, a D Sport when I can wear that, whatever that thing is, <laughs> out uh, first and then put the D Sport on later. But yeah, so that's, uh, that's that as far as tires go. Uh, brakes are basically stock and they're, you know, eh, they're old school brakes. They're not the greatest. I just ordered double centered pads, EBC front and rear. They'll be here to this afternoon. Amazon, amazing, right? You get up early enough, you order something, they bring it to you the same day. Uh, so I'll be putting those on and changing the brake fluid, uh, front and rear. Um, the rear brake, Seems to work fine when it's cold. After it gets hot, it gets pretty mushy. So there could be moisture in the line. Uh, I'm just gonna drain all the brake fluid out and start over. I've got tons of it. So yeah, a post-it note on this Kimoto, Amazon product, by the way. And you know, I think it's a there. It's a Chinese knockoff of sorts, but it, and I could be wrong. That could be made in America. I don't know. I didn't research it. I buy what I want and what I need and what works. Um, of all the tool bags, front fender tool bags I've found, and I have three different other brands, that is by far superior. Um, it stays on the fender better. It has a safety loop that goes all the way around. I don't know if you can see it right here, all the way around the fork system. So even if these do come loose, it's gonna hang down and you're not gonna lose your tool bag. It's padded inside and out. It's a fairly good size. The, the way it attaches to the uh, fender in my opinion, is superior to some of the better, better brands. Uh, so I'm running that. I also have a Kimoto handlebar bag on one of my other bikes, and I find it better than this Giant Loop one that I have here. Sorry, Giant Loop. Go buy a Kimoto Giant Loop, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Anyway, let's move on. Plastics. I bought all new... UFO plastics from, I believe they came, where did they come from? I wanna say they came from Italy, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, anyway, you can buy them for the KLX 400 and they come in green and white, just like the KLX 400. And uh, they were direct bolt on. Minor trimming on these guys because I didn't like, uh, some of the fit back here was pushing into this uh, plastic tank more than I like. So I just took a Dremel with a drum and, you know, sanded this back so that it wasn't digging into the plastic. Uh, that wasn't cool, in my opinion. No need to have, you know, high, uh, high frequency vibration friction there. You could, uh, something could eventually go wrong. Um, driving lights. To start off with, we have the Tusk uh, from Rocky Mountain uh, driving light bracket. It bolts in between the fender and the bottom of the triple clamp. I use spacers, if you can see under there, back here. Uh, to move the fender down enough to give me the, the, the clearance I wanted. And then these little driving lights are another Amazon product. Um, I don't get too crazy with driving lights. I know you can pick up a driving light, you know, from Cyclops or from Denali or from whoever for four, five, six hundred dollars. Uh, I don't do that. I mostly put driving lights on for visibility and traffic, and these are fine, right? I can buy a new set of these every year for 10 years for what a set of Denali's would cost. And they're gonna do the same thing. Not to mention, I don't know how many posts I've seen of Denali's burning out. And, you know, I think that would tend to drive me crazy to spend $500 on a set of driving lights and it lasts six months. I mean, I'm sure they replace it, but why go through that if you don't have to? <clears throat> if you need those types of lights, great. Good for you. I don't drive at night that much or ride at night that much. Uh, again, those are for traffic avoidance more than anything, and they work. Anyway, that's my rant on driving lights. Um, Post-it note on the headlight. I have the Rocky Mountain uh, LED conversion inside the headlight housing. Works great. Highly recommended. Everything that I bought from Rocky Mountain is just amazing. And, you know. It just works. Everything bolts right on and it does what it's supposed to do. You know, hats off to those guys. Amazing. Windshield Amazon product comes with this mounting hardware, which 
um, is the typical, you know, collapsible rubber. As you tighten it, it expands. So you mark your holes, drill them, install it the way you go. I put little spacers under mine. I wasn't hundred percent happy with the way it fit. The spacers cured that. So yeah, it's work. It works great. I don't know. It deflects the air right at about at my eye level, which is fine. Uh, it was supposed to keep the, the wind off my chest more than anything. And it's doing that. Turn signals are stock. Didn't see any reason to change them. You know, if, if they get broken off road, then we'll change them then. Uh, double take enduro mirrors. You know, got to have double takes and everything I have. Uh, let's see, Tusk uh, handguards and actually, I believe these are. Let's let's back let's backtrack a little bit here. These are Barkbuster aluminum frames and mounting hardware. And I put the Tusk handguards on there because I didn't want to put the giant Barkbuster Storm grips on there. They're just kind of overkill for what I wanted and what I needed. Uh, let's see, moving around, moving around. Stock levers still. I mean, levers are levers. What do we have down here? Oh, yes, we have carburetor. So the carburetor has a JD jet kit in it. Um, <clears throat> and I went with the... Um, I didn't go with the high altitude setting, just the sea level settings and um, the jets and needle that were required for having a modified air box and or slip on exhaust. And from what I can tell, the jetting is spot on. Those guys do a really good job with their homework. And yeah, she runs great. Starts right up, idles perfect, scoots right along. Uh, zero complaints with that, highly recommended. Um, got a post-it note down here. Don't know why. Oh yeah, that, I do know why. We've got these, um, these protection plates, the cases, uh, side cases covers on the DRZ are magnesium and they're brittle. Magnesium's good, but it's brittle. So you can see right here where the shifters are already rubbing on this, this additional aluminum, uh, plate that you can buy pretty much anywhere. I think these came from Amazon and you just use some red RTV and glue them on clean them up obviously with some alcohol or, or your favorite solvent uh, glue these on put some tape to hold it until the RTV settles and or cures and then you have the extra protection that this provides as far as just being pushed in to that or even rubbing on it during shifting like you can see this happening here um, underneath that we have a tusk shifter folding um, shifter there from again Rocky Mountain um, what do we have? Oh yeah, this was put here because I wanted to talk about what I changed in the electrical, right? So I had an auxiliary port, which can be used to charge the battery and or run something. It's fused. Um, battery, shouldn't point there, that's the air filter. Batteries back there. I installed a, a lithium battery. No problems with that. It's working great. And I guess that's really not much to say about that. Turn the key on, push a button, go, right? The uh, voltmeter up top always reads out about 13.8 volts. So I think we're good to go there with the engine running, that is. I installed a new kickstand because I thought, I mean, obviously they're bent by design right here, but I thought the other, the one that came on the bike was bent because the bike leans over quite a bit. And I'm guessing that's by design. Either that or this tab on my frame is bent. Um, I haven't really taken the time to look at other DRZs. If you have a DRZ, maybe comment about kickstand length and how far it leans over i don't know i mean it seems okay it just it seems excessive to me uh tusk off-road pegs they're great i like them don't bang your shins on that you won't have fun the air box was modified per instructions as far as making a, what is it a three by three hole in the top i used a one inch hole saw and made some you know a, a design on the top to let more air in and which to me looks neater looks more factory anyway and again, I think that's, um, I talk about it while I'm writing, but I think what, why the airbox jetting and slip on exhaust mod works so well on this bike is because you're emulating the off-road version, which I don't know that was ever sold in the U S I know it was sold in Australia and other places, but that bike had 40 horsepower from the factory. And really the only difference I think maybe other than slightly higher compression, which probably accounts for most of the horsepower gains um was the air intake on the air box cover a lot more air in with a, a larger uh you know intake hole 
Uh, I think we've emulated the jetting JD has that was stock on the 400. Is it the 400E? I don't know. Whatever the pure off-road version was. So it all adds up to giving you, you know, 40-ish horsepower. It, it's not low on horsepower, in my opinion. Um, I know horsepower is used as an excuse for a lot of people that probably need to learn how to ride. But anyway, going back... I believe there was a, a Gigantor emissions canister there that the fuel tank vented into to meet good old California emissions. Um, it, anyway, um, so yeah, let's move around. That's gone. Uh, tail tidy. I believe that's a tusk from, again, from Rocky Mountain bracket that mounts underneath here to the stock location. And you end up with this instead of a big scorpion tail hanging down. Uh, here from Rocky Mountain, the uh, rear rack, which I've installed a Moscow Moto uh, Noblin into this uh, Tusk bag setup. This allows me to, I can loosen this and it just slides right off of here after I undo the straps from the bottom and I can mount it to any of my other bikes. Um, it's, I like this, it's a good rack. It seems solid, it's not too heavy. It's been working great. Oh no, I showed my license plate. Uh, moving around. Let's see. Oh yeah, we have FMF exhaust, uh, which has been fine. I have a um, aftermarket spark arrestor in there because I like having a spark arrestor that uh, you know says it's certification right here in case I'm off-road and those guys want to pull me over and say, do you have a spark arrestor? I'm like, well, go look for yourself. Um, have a Moscow Moto. Heat shield on here that came with my Moscow Motor Rackless uh, 80 setup that I didn't need, obviously, on my GS, so I put it on here. A heat shield comes with these uh, test bags, too, which I have laying around. It's not on anything yet. Uh, I could have used that, but I had the Moscow Motor first, so, eh, whatever. It's on there. It's doing what it needs to do. We talked about brakes. EBC brakes are on the way. Seat Concepts seat. The seat's pretty good. I kind of wish I would not have purchased the low option so that it was a little more level right here. It's, it's not forcing me down into this section, but you can tell since there's no support between here and here, it kind of want to rock your hips towards that section. I mean, I can force myself back here and sit on the wider area when I'm on the road uh, and, and much more comfortable than, you know, the stock seat was about this wide all the way back. So, you know. Insta wedgie all day long. I don't know how someone rides more than 10 minutes like that, but hey, some people are into that. Uh, the big gas tank, a Serbi, a Serbis, you call it whatever you want to call it. That is just under four gallons, I believe. I like the natural version. You can just quick peek. You can see how much gas you have. Uh, you can see a black mark right there. That's about half, right? So if this is four gallons, I'll have about two gallons left down here. And uh, just for, you know, the mental gauge, how much further can I go? I usually estimate 50 miles per gallon. It probably goes farther than that off-road, depending. I don't know. I guess it depends on what's going on as far as <clears throat> are you spinning your tire a lot? Are you in deep sand? Are you going downhill? Are you going uphill? Are you going fast or are you going slow? Uh, look at that. I have a matching foot peg on this side. Freaking crazy. Same with uh, the uh, case saver on the clutch cover here. Uh, but one other thing on the clutch, uh, this bike had, I thought it was 19,000, but I was wrong. I think it was just under 18,000 miles when I bought it. And the clutch was kind of doing a little, it felt not really like slipping, but the engine was revving between shifts, right? So it, it felt like, okay, yeah, it is slipping a little bit. So anyway, Tusk, uh, Rocky Mountain, heavy duty. I didn't go with the racing one, I don't think, but yeah. So new clutch plates, uh, fiber and metal, and heavy-duty springs. The clutch didn't get that much stiffer, in my opinion. Uh, it definitely has more bite now, though. That uh, that slight slipping between shifts is gone. So that I'm happy with that. Yeah, oh, when I changed the oil the first time, whoever changed the oil last, and I don't believe it was the previous owner because he took this bike to the to the local Suzuki shop for all of the maintenance. I have all of the... Um, receipts and, and de details on that and whoever changed the oil last did not put the o-ring under the oil filter and you guys do drz guys know what i'm talking about right 
So yeah, that wasn't there. I don't know how long that wasn't there, but uh, not that it matters. I think the thing will function without an oil filter, period. But you want to filter your oil, you need that O-ring in there. So, oh, look at this. We have a skid plate, a Ricochet skid plate. And I got this from Rocky Mountain too. You could order it directly from Ricochet for probably the same price. Uh, but I just wanted to order everything from the same location and get one big Christmas Day package, which was kind of fun. Um, I have Ricochet skid plates on several bikes. They're strong. Um, they're thought out and designed, well designed as far as how they attach to the bike. Uh, so I'm really happy with those. Um, I've... I even have on my, my 1250GS, uh, a Ricochet skid plate, and that one has probably seen the ground more than any of my other bikes. Uh, she's a big, heavy girl, so if you're on some single track stuff, it's you're going to scrape on things. And I think I've dropped it a couple times off-road. Well, I know I have. And uh, the skid plate did what it was supposed to do on that bike. Uh, this bike, haven't been off-road enough to drop it. It will happen, I'm sure. Um, but, yeah. Just a peace of mind, right? Protecting on this side, we're protecting the water, water pump, oil filter, part of the case on the other side, the alternator area, and of course the belly. Um, you do encounter rocks in Southern California off-road riding. It's always good to have a skip plate. Oh, I know what I wanted to talk about over here. Um, when I did the clutch, I replaced the clutch cable and the throttle cables as well. Again, from Rocky Mountain. Uh, lubed them up really good, installed them, good to go. Oh, the graphics are from Singe. If you guys are interested in making yourself a, a KLX 400, um, just send them an email. Tell them you need a DRZ set up, but you want it to say KLX and replace the 300 with 400, and they'll do this for you. Uh, I don't even think it was there was any extra cost involved. Almost forgot. Yeah, we've got this, um, this dash. Again, Rocky Mountain, it uh, relocates the key here, gives you a, a section here for a 12-volt accessory plug. Mine happens to have um, a voltage meter readout. Extra holes for switches here if you want to utilize those. I just have my vent shoved in there. I have ram balls on everything. Makes it easier to mount accessories when the time comes. Here's my giant loop. It's, it's a good bag, don't get me wrong. I said earlier that I like the Kim Moto better. I do like the Kim Moto better. Uh, but the Giant Loop is a good bag. It's there, it's not going anywhere. The Kim Moto's a little bit bigger. Um, the zipper is in a better location, in my opinion, and it mounts better. But that's just me. Your mileage may vary. Oh yeah, we have tug strap too. Just noticed that right here. Gotta have a tugger, right? And I believe there's one on the, on the rear underneath that rack. Let's... um. Let's see if we can pop these bags off real quick and you can see the rack in case you're... We're going flip-flops here in the garage today. For the first time in many moons, it's not 100 degrees in my garage. Pop these guys, rock straps. If you don't have rock straps, you need to get rock straps. Not much more to say about that. So we unscrew this, we can slide this back, boom, and it's right off of there, just like that. And then you have your tusk rack back here. You can see it mounts to the seat bolts. And underneath, there's a bracket, factory bracket from the factory mount, and there's a spacer that comes with the rack. It all bolts together. And it's solid. Um, I mean, I'm not going to grab it and shake it and go, that's not going anywhere because that kind of curses things, I believe. But, uh, yeah. So there's, there's a better view of the rack and a view of the Noblin from Moscomoto that you can put on any bike. And if you have... You know, a set of saddlebags like these tusks that have a reinforced uh, section under here. I think there's a fiberglass inside here. Uh, then you drill out and install this. And you can see how that just captures into this groove. And that securely mounts you back here. You tighten this down, it kind of goes into the, into the Allen head there to keep it secured from sliding forward or backward. Obviously, it can't slide backward if you have your side straps on properly, right? Anyway, that's the KLX 400, and uh, let's go for a ride. Looks like we're recording, so hopefully I'm not talking to myself. Speaking of recording, and kind of a quick overview of what we talked about in the garage as far as mod. For some reason online, you know, you hear people wanting more torque from their DRZ or their 
DR650, I'm like, are you, what, huh? How? I don't get it. Yeah, see, no, no weird revving between ships now. It's just, boom, solid ship after solid ship. But anyway, he looks fat, right? Uh, just kidding. No rider modes, but I'm not sure that a KLX 300 or a 300 Rally has rider modes either.